Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm in the reptile room cleaning up some and I got Aurora, my bow constrictor out right here. She's uh it's feeding day, I've just got some rats in the other room thawing out. So I thought I'd do some terrarium cleaning before I get on to feeding at the end of the day. And uh I thought I'd give some updates on my reptile room because there's some things going on and not everybody may have seen it. So well, the, the snakes are still all in the same places. The uh, terrariums are looking good. And actually, I'm about to pull Indica out of here. I'm going to get her out so I can make sure that my male gets some good feeding in between. Well, uh, for a few days, just to make sure that everybody's doing well. So, she's all... She's, um... She's doing quite well, but I'm going to put her in with my other two females just for a few days. Well, actually, I'm going to put her in for a few weeks, and I'm going to switch out my Max Snow to go in with my Bell Albino. So, just over here, I'll be putting her back. So after a few days of being alone, my male is going to be going in with Roach again. If everybody's been paying attention, uh, you know that he's already been with her for a week once, but I just want to, you know, switch them out a few times just to make sure that everything goes well. And I've been feeding them very heavily. I've been, you know, you always got to gut load your insects, and I've been uh, starting to feed my insects a high quality cat food, like my mealworms and my uh, crickets are actually feeding on it right now and I'm hoping that helps uh, fatten my geckos up even better than I have had in the past. But I've got my three breeder females in here, one of which I won't be able to use this year, but uh, hopefully next year I've got a male set up for that. But here's Aurora on the, on the thing that I built so I can clean her terrarium. It's really nice watching the snakes climb. I just cut down a few maple trees in my yard and debarked them. If you do it, if you cut down trees like that in the spring, it's really easy to peel the bark off because before the leaves come out on the trees, it's pushing a lot of um, what's called, uh, well, it's the cambium layer is what it's called, and it's full of liquid and it uh, just strips right off really fast instead of waiting until the end of summer and then having to take dry bark off of the tree. It's really difficult. But uh, if anybody else, if, you've, if you guys have been watching my video with this guy, um, this is the little hatchling gecko, or the young gecko that I just got. It was given to me because it's not doing so well. So actually, if you haven't been paying attention, about to lose a leg. I've decided to leave the leg alone rather than cut it off. I'm making sure I disinfect it often. But as you can see, that black shriveled up leg on the front there. It was pretty sad to see this happening. And from what I was explaining in my last couple videos, if you haven't seen them, I'll put an annotation up in this corner. Um, yeah, he's he didn't have a moist box where he was, and stuck sheds, nobody was removing his stuck sheds, so he's lit, missing the, uh, the end of a couple toes and a couple things. But he still feeds well, so I'm pretty optimistic. But that's what's going on in the reptile room. Got my uh, females out of my Bell Albino's terrarium now. He's right in here. And I'm hoping he helps me produce some nice little babies this year. We named him George. We had a Bell Albino here last year who, his name is George. He didn't belong to us, but since we got a bell albino now, um, we couldn't help but keep calling him George. So, by default, his name's George. 
but I, I really like bell albinos. Very cool geckos. And anybody who's uh, asked me about the uh, anole that I had in there, sadly the anole passed away. It didn't exactly, uh, it didn't make it because it was kind of, um, kind of a stressful trip up here. It came up on some tropical plants that ended up um, at our local swimming pool, and then the local swimming pool, they, uh, apparently people had put him in the pool, and all kinds of stuff. Somebody ripped off his tail, and after all that stress, he kind of, after the stress of being at the, on the tropical ship, um, eh, sorry, tongue-tied, on the plant shipment, and then, uh, going to the swimming pool, being manhandled by a bunch of people who don't know much about reptiles, and then going to the pet store here in town, and then coming to me. So it was quite the trip, and yeah, it didn't make it. But just thought I'd give everybody a nice update on what's going on in the reptile room. I'm actually planning on starting to build some uh, big stands to cover up all my... or not to cover up, but instead of these things that I've got my reptiles sitting on, the, like, I've got a couple speakers with a piece of plywood on top, but, uh, I, I'd like to build a couple huge, like, um, double-leveled, uh, stands out of some plywood and 2 by 4s and stuff to replace everything that you're looking at right now. So if anybody's got some, uh, experience building racks for their reptiles to hold terrariums, maybe give me, if you want to, you know, add your two cents in, any problems you've ran into, anything like that. But that's been today's update. Have a good one, guys.